A very good evening aspirants welcome to daily newspaper analysis of Shankar IAS Academy today's date is 16th of July 2024 displayed here or the list of news articles that we are going to discuss today so without much delay let us get into today's news article discussion firstly look at this news article this news article talks about Kodagu now suddenly Kodagu is in news because of heavy rain for the past couple of days an orange alert has also been issued due to heavy rain and the river kaveri has been rising due to the heavy rain this is what the article is talking about so from the prelims perspective let us learn few facts about river kaveri know that kaveri is the third largest river in the southern india after godavari and krishna it is also called as dakshin ganga or the ganges of the south remember it is the largest river of tamil nadu and it is often referred as ponni river talking about the river course see the river flows through karnataka and tamil nadu and the river basin can be divided into three different parts firstly the western ghats and then the plateau of mysore remember the delta consists of 81155 square kilometer and it is part of karnataka tamil nadu kerala and puducherry the length of the river is 800 kilometers the river drains into the bay of bengal at the kumbuhar in the mailadudurai district in tamil nadu one of the distinct feature of kaveri river is that it is a perennial river and it is fed by both the southwest and northeast monsoon okay it forms two river islands one is sri ranga patnam and the other one is siva samudra siva samudra it is in karnataka okay talking about the origin of kaveri see the kaveri has its origin at tala kaveri on the brahmagiri hills of the western ghats near the cherangla village of kurk district of karnataka okay it rises at a elevation of 1341 meters at talakaveri talking about the important tributaries some of the left bank tributaries include herengi hemavadi arkavadi simsha sarabank and then tirumani muttar then some of the right bank tributaries include lakshmana teertha noyel bhavani amravadi moyar surnavadi and kabini now talking about the wildlife sanctuaries of kaveri seat host nilgiri biosphere reserve which is part of wayanad nahahole bandipur and mudumalai and it also host nilambur silent valley sirwani hill which is in tamil nadu kerala and karnataka respectively some of the protected areas within the kaveri river basin is just displayed here based on the state list as well just go through it so these are all very relevant facts that you have to remember about kaveri river it is a very important a river when it comes to prelims map based question and in mains there might be a question with respect to inter state river dispute so for these two reasons it is important to know about kaveri river so with these learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion now look at this news article according to the news article the trade estimates released by ministry of commerce and trade has widened by 9.4 percentage compared to the last year the export have hit 200 billion dollar in the first quarter of 2024 and the goal is to reach 800 billion this year even though that is a increase in export it is accompanied by sharp increase in import as well which may push india's current account deficit to up to 1.4 percentage of gdp this is what the article is talking about so in this news article discussion we shall see some of the basics about the balance of payment and then we shall see about what is this current account deficit okay firstly know that the balance of payment is the record of all import and export transactions of a country during a period the main accounts of bop or capital and the current accounts okay so usually the current account has day to day expenses when it means capital account the expenses or the receipt that is more than one year okay now coming to current account it actually records trade and goods and services and transfer payments it has two components firstly the balance of trade that is the import and export of a country and then balance of invisible which consists of services net factor income and unilateral transfers unilateral transfers are nothing but grants gifts and then remittances that is received by our country on the other hand when it comes to capital account it records all international transactions of assets like money stocks and bonds so with this basic understanding let us see about what is current account deficit see if the value of goods and services we import exceeds the export 
then the country runs into current account deficit now this current account deficit can be reduced by using two techniques firstly devaluation of domestic currency for those who don't know what is devaluation see if currently one dollar is 70 rupees when you devaluate it means you have to pay 80 rupees to get one dollar okay here it is like depreciation right so a voluntary depreciation is called as devaluation when you devaluate what happens is exports will grow because when people export priorly they will be getting only 70 rupees but now when people export they will get 80 rupees in exchange of a dollar okay that is why devaluation of domestic currency can help reduce the cad secondly we can adjust suitable foreign direct investment policies again this can increase export due to increased competitiveness if you know the special economic zones these zones they substitute import and promote export which means they produce goods that we actually import and they also export it to other countries as well so these special economic zones can be encouraged by changing the policies of foreign direct investment and foreign portfolio investment so these are the two ways how we can adjust this current account deficit hope i uh, hope you could understand what is current account deficit and how it can be tackled so with these learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion now look at this article about money bill on monday the chief justice of india has agreed to list the petition that challenged the constitutionality of certain act passed by the parliament in the route of money bill so this is why money bill is in news today so from the prelims perspective let us learn certain facts that you have to remember about money bill even this year prelims we had a question about money bill so it is always very important to revise the basics know that in the constitution article 110 deals with the money bill as per the constitution a bill shall be deemed to be a money bill if it contains only provisions dealing with all or any of the following matter such matter includes imposition abolition remission alteration or regulation of any tax then the regulation of the borrowing of money or the giving of any guarantee by the government of india or the amendment of the law with respect to any financial obligations undertaken by the government of india then it includes custody of consolidated fund of india the payment of money into and the withdrawal of money from any such fund then the appropriation of money out of consolidated fund of india then declaring of any expenditure that should be charged on cfi then the receipt of money on account of cfi and finally any matter incidental to any of the matter specified in clause a and clause f okay these are the provisions that deal with money bill as mentioned in article 110 of our indian constitution so with this basics let us understand some of the features of money bill firstly if any question arises whether a bill is money bill or not then the decision of the speaker of lok sabha will be the final and his decision cannot be questioned in any court or even by the president of india secondly the introduction of money bill can happen only in the lok sabha and with the prior recommendation of the president it cannot be introduced in rajya sabha and money bill can be introduced only by a minister it cannot be introduced by a member of a parliament so it can be considered as a government bill as well thirdly as i said earlier with respect to money bill rajya sabha has a very limited role once the bill is passed in the lok sabha it will be transmitted to the rajya sabha the rajya sabha cannot amend or reject the bill but the rajya sabha can make recommendations and these recommendations are not binding on lok sabha talking about how money bill is passed see a simple majority is enough to pass a money bill once it is passed by the lok sabha it gets transmitted to the rajya sabha rajya sabha has to return the bill within 14 days or it will be deemed to be passed by the rajya sabha talking about the president role with respect to the money bill once the money bill is presented before the president he may either give the assent or withhold the assent but he cannot return the bill to the house for reconsideration also remember as per article 110 clause 3 the speaker has the authority to decide whether a bill is money bill or not this we saw earlier it's a right but the judiciary can review the money bill to see whether it violates any fundamental right under article 13 of the constitution this is as per the indira gandhi versus raj narain case 1975 as i said earlier when it comes to money bill it can be only certain 
things that has been mentioned in Article 110. But what happens is, President used the money bill to amend the Prevention of Money Laundering Act, which gives blanket power to Enforcement Directorate to arrest and write and etc. And it has used money bill for passing the Finance Act 2017, which alters appointment to 19 key judicial tribunals. See, these kind of legislative action raise question regarding its constitutionality. That is why judicial look into these matters. That is why the judiciary has decided to review the money bill that violates the constitution of India. These are all very relevant facts that you have to remember about money bill from the exam perspective. Make a note of it and use it wise. With these learned points, let us move on to the next news article discussion. Now look at this news article. This news article talks about WPI. According to the news, the wholesale price index has reached a new high in last 16 months. So in this backdrop, let us revise about what is WPI from the prelims perspective. Okay. Now that WPI measures the average change in the prices of goods at the wholesale level, it is a critical indicator for understanding inflation and price trends in an economy. All transactions at the first point of bulk sale in domestic market are included. Major criticism of this index is that the general public does not buy products at wholesale price. Remember, the base year of WPI is 2011 to 12. It was revised in 2017. Before that, 2004 to 5 was the base year for WPI. Talking about the weightage, as you can see here, the primary articles holds 22.62 percentage, then the fuel and power holds 13.15 percentage and then the manufactured products holds 64.23 percentage. So the highest weightage is for manufacturing products. Also note this fact, WPI is released by Office of the Economic Advisor, Ministry of Commerce and Industry. The WPI is released monthly with provisional data for the latest month and final data for the previous month. So these are the general facts that you have to remember about WPI. Now let us see why WPI is important in an economy. See, firstly, it gives a domestic insight. WPI is crucial for understanding inflation at wholesale level before it affects the retail market. It helps policymakers and then businesses and economists to gauge inflationary trend. Secondly, it assists RBI and government for monetary or fiscal policies. And thirdly, it helps in international comparison. It allows for inflation comparison across countries and this aids in economic analysis and international trade decisions as well. So we have seen WPI. It will be a fault if we forget to see about CPI. So we'll see about CPI also. Know that CPI is the measure of price change in a basket of consumer goods or services. CPI is a numerical estimation calculated using the rate of a sample of representative objects, the price of which are gathered periodically. So it is basically calculated based on a basket of goods whose values will be changing from time to time based on what people consume. Okay. And remember, the CPI captures change in price level at the consumer level. Changes in price at the producer level are tracked by WPI. On the other hand, CPI can capture the change in the prices of services which the WPI cannot okay WPI only the goods are calculated but in CPI both goods and services are calculated unlike WPI there are certain types of CPI that you have to remember first is this industrial workers CPI then the agricultural laborer CPI and then there is rural laborer CPI when it comes to industrial workers it measures the alternation over a time period on the prices of a fixed basket, fixed basket of goods and services utilized by industrial workers. Similarly, the agricultural laborers, their consumption is measured under CPA agricultural laborers. And finally, this rural laborers, their consumption is tracked by CPI rural laborers. All these indices are published periodically by Labor Bureau under Ministry of Labor and Empowerment for all India as well as state and union territories. Remember, even if these indices are there, they cover only a segment of population. That is why we have designed three more indices with respect to CPI. You can see that here. The first one is CPI Rural. This index measures the change in the price of commodity basket consumed by the rural population. Similarly, the urban population consumption is calculated by CPI Urban. And when it comes to CPI combined, both urban and rural populations data is combined. The base year for all these calculations is 2011 to 12 and it is published monthly 
by NSO, Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation, MOPSP. So these are all very important facts that you have to remember about CPI and WPI. Know the difference between the two and just remember the weightage that we discussed right now. It is very important with respect to prelims and mains examination. So these learned points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Look at this news article. This news article talks about government's union budget for the year. The author says that this budget is like a litmus test. That is, it will strike the right balance or it will be flatter. This is what the article is talking about. So let us understand some of the important facts from the article using our mains answer writing discussion. Let me read out the question for you. What is budget transparency? Scratching its genesis discuss the benefits associated with budget transparency as well as the ways through which it can be promoted in functioning of a government. This can be asked in GS paper 3 and it is a straightforward question. So in the introduction you can give a brief outlook of Indian budget and you can try to quote a report on Transparency International. So starting with the introduction here you can write that. Budget transparency, a vital aspect of good governance, refers to the availability and accessibility of information on government financial activities, enabling citizens to understand how public resources are allocated, utilized, and managed. The concept gained significance in 1990s as countries faced fiscal crisis and citizens demanded greater accountability. The International Monetary Fund, IMF, and the World Bank championed budget transparency as a key reform in the 1990s. India too embraced this concept with the Union Budget 2017-18 to being a landmark moment as it introduced the first ever budget transparency and accountability report. So you can quote these facts in the interaction part and move on to the first Part of your answer. Here you have to write about the benefits of budget transparency. See the first thing is improving accountability. Transparency ensures the government are responsible for their financial decisions. For example, the controller and auditor general of India reported that union government's fiscal deficit reduced by 1.4 percentage of GDP between 2014 to 19. This indicates improved fiscal discipline. So this improved accountability is one of the benefit of transparency. Secondly, enhanced citizen participation. See, informed citizens can engage in budgetary decisions, promote inclusive governance. The union budget 2022-23 received over 40,000 suggestions from citizens and it is a testament to growing public engagement. Thirdly, it helps in better decision making. Transparency facilitates data-driven decision making reducing the risk of corruption and misallocation of resources. The Government of India's public finance management system has improved fund tracking and reduced leakages by 10 to 15 percentage. Finally, it helps in increasing trust between citizen and the government. A survey by in Transparency and Accountability Initiative found that 70 percentage of Indian trust the government more when budget information is readily available. So you can write these points and move on to the second part of the answer. Here you have to write the ways to promote budget transparency. See the first and foremost thing is release of budget data. The systematic and timely release of all relevant fiscal information is directly linked with budget transparency. So disclosing budget document and simplified budget information through electronic and print media is very important. Secondly, effective role for the legislature. It must be able to scrutinize the budget report and independently review them. It must be able to debate and influence budget policy and be in a position to effectively hold the government to account. Thirdly, effective role of civil society and media. See, so citizens directly or through these vehicles must be in a position to influence budget policy and must be in position to hold the government to account. In many ways, it is similar role to that of the legislature albeit only indirectly. Finally, improving budget literacy of parliamentarians, government officials, elected representative, journalists and select civil society representatives and increasing their capacity to analyze budget. We can even create budget literacy manuals for capacity building programs. So you can write these points in your main answer of the body and move on to the conclusion part. Here you can write that. Budget transparency is a vital component of good governance, promoting accountability, 
citizen partnership citizen participation and better decision making by leveraging technology publishing budget document and providing timely information government can ensure that public resources are managed efficiently and effectively india's progress in budget transparency is commendable and continued efforts will strengthen trust and promote inclusive growth so you can write these points in your conclusion part and finish your answer so in this news article discussion we saw about budget transparency the steps taken by the government to ensure budget transparency what are the benefits of it and how we can improve budget transparency we saw all of that with a decent conclusion so with these learned points now let us move on to next part of the news article discussion which is the prelims practice question discussion today we have two mcq to discuss because this first question it is about the cpi and wpi the weightage of food in cpi is higher than that in the wpi this statement is correct the second statement says the wpi does not capture changes in the price of services while well, cpi does this statement is also correct now the third statement says the rbi has now adopted wpi as its key measure of inflation and to decide on changing the key policy rates this statement is incorrect it is actually cpi and not wpi so here the correct answer is option a 1 and 2 only because the question asked for only the correct statement third statement is incorrect moving on look at this question about money bill two statements are given and you have to find whether it is correct and explanation of the first statement or not see the correct answer is actually option b the lok sabha is powerful in the matter of money bill but that is not because the president cannot return the bill to house for reconsideration here the president cannot return the bill because the money bill is introduced on the prior recommendation of president so this means that statement 2 is not the correct explanation of statement 1 so here the correct answer is option b both statements are correct but two is not the correct explanation of statement 1 with this we came to the end of the news article discussion if you like the video hit like do comment and don't forget to subscribe to shankar ias academy youtube channel so thank you so much for listening